Hi, my name is Gudrun from GE Designs, and this is our part three of the Phoenix Quilt Along, the haunted part. Hi, everybody! Happy Halloween! <laughs> uh, it's a uh, of course, time for our part three of the Phoenix Quilt Along. I hope things are going well, but I just want to remind you all, it's okay to not keep up. Most of us are not keeping up with making everything uh, in each part. So do not stress about it and make a few of part one, a few of part two, and continue on so that you can have a little bit of this and that as you we finish the day because it's easy to go back you can watch the videos later uh go back and watch them and catch up whenever you want and i shouldn't call it catch up because it's not like everybody's going to supposed to be finishing at the same time we're making different sizes we sew at the different pace and life gets in the way and some of us are just starting out i am thrilled to see all of the new quilters young old wherever they are in life. It's a beautiful thing. Uh, so I, I took some photos that you posted from on the on Goodrich Quilt Crew of some of our youngins, some of our young new quilters doing amazing. So let's start with some of those youngin uh, photos. They have, uh, yeah, there we go. So we'll start with Jennifer. I believe this is her daughter. Look at those smiles, having a good old time and quilting. Um, the next one is our very own Julie that works at GE. She is uh, working with her, her niece and uh, a little furry friend as well. So they are working on a phoenix together. Um, maybe not one of our youngest quilters, but a new quilter. I love seeing this. Mary is helping her husband getting him going on his first quilt and he she said that he was doing amazing with his quarter inch seam so that's great congrats congrats and you know what uh i love to see all different genders quilting that everybody's welcome here male female non-binary trans you're all welcome and safe here we are a inclusive community so love to see those photos all right, so then we have a little young one that's sewing with Sue, doing awesome, really, really great. Um, and then we have a little one. He may not be sewing, but he's participating and having a good old time with Rebecca. Um, let me see. There were a couple of more, I think. Um, there was one more. I uh, with we'll, we'll we'll post it later. I think it was Kathy had a, a young one sewing oh um the one before the number 59 that one oh we, we showed this no 59 next one yeah this one janet has a young quilter in the house she looks like a pro though she looks like she's been doing it for a while love that what a great setup there um so then uh, we checked out there's some fun times being had all over the all over the world, all over the country. We have fun time in Arizona, uh, some extra fun time with some libations in Florida and uh, some fun time in Upper Michigan. I see everybody's happy, smiles, love seeing that. Um, and then I took some photos of, of your progress, fun to see different, different fabrics. And it's all good about posting your photos of your progress right now. We just don't want it posted the day before or before we start. So we understand we also at different speeds, so it's all good. All right, so here are, that was Gail's pieces first, and these are Jody's pieces, and then we have Kathleen's, beautiful hustle and bustle. We have Lillian's, awesome uh, black and white, it looks like a little silver in there. And then we have Lisa's, some cave action with some backgrounds. We have, Beautiful pieces from Pam, and she said she was having a moment reminiscing. She lost her dad in 2020, 
And her background fabric, her Tim Holtz background fabrics, just reminds of her of her dad's work pants, which were always oil stained and uh, looking like that. So isn't that a beautiful memory? What a, what a happenstance that that is. Love it. Um, Sheila's pieces are there. The blue and green flannel looking great. So I think everybody's doing awesome. Uh, wanted to just clarify, I saw a lot of comments and, and questions in, in your comments on the video last time about the pieces in step seven, which way to sew it. We want to sew it along the longer side, along the eight and a half inch side, because we want to be able to get two four inch pieces out of there. So um, that's all good. So I, uh, of course, it's Halloween and it's now past one o'clock here in Minnesota, which means it's 6 p.m. in Iceland, and that's always what I go by. So we are going to see Phoenix Rising today. This is our Phoenix cocktail, and I am going to have a sip because I think it's time. Nice and fresh and delicious. And <clears throat> when uh, next up, I'm getting a, a little spooky feeling. You notice anything? Notice anything? No? Anyways, I wanted to tell you I'm gonna demonstrate the next steps. And after that, we're gonna do a little stretch. Mr. HP is gonna lead us through a little yoga stretch live. So I'm gonna show you the next steps and then get ready to do a little stretch. You can do it right from your chair, just stand, sit there and then standing up. But this next step, uh, we're gonna start putting the blocks together. So remember what I said, if you just got a few units of units A and a few of units B, you don't have to have all your strips set and everything done, you can still make some blocks. So we're gonna work through um, steps 13 through 16 in this next part, in part three. So um, we're gonna start with, uh, so for this, we only need units A and units B. We save unit C for the final arrangement. So we're going to start with units A and B. And the B units, we're going to start with the ones that have the light centers. So you want to grab your light centers. And we'll be making um, block one. We're going to call it block 1A and 1B. And the difference is just the direction. So we're going to start with block a and I like to do this when I'm when I'm piecing blocks and I'm mixing fabrics and to make sure that I have them oriented correctly because block one uh, A is going to be like this with um, the dark. Oh, I am doing the wrong one. I am supposed to have the dark centers. Sorry, block one A is supposed to have the dark centers. No wonder something wasn't looking right to me. So dark centers and then. The dark is going to be in the top right and the bottom left. So we have the B unit with the dark center and then we have two A units and you want to make sure that it's top right and it's kind of like a ladder going down to the left. All right. So this is the block 1A. I'm just going to put it up here. And then block 1B is just the opposite. So we take the center and then we are going to place the top one on the top left. And move these together so we can still see them on the screen. Like this. And then bottom right. So if you're walking downstairs, it's going down from the left to the right. So this is one A and this is one B. So what we wanna do is just, I like to just sew one unit to the center and then press and for the blocks one, both A and B, we're gonna press away from that middle, middle one. So we're gonna press away from the C unit towards the A units in both cases. So we're gonna end up with a block 1A that looks like this, and then 1B that looks like this. So they're opposite. And the beautiful thing is, once we start laying out, because they're opposites, 
Um, this one going down this way, even if we turn it, it's still going to be oriented the same way. This is why we have to really be careful when we are making these. And so you want to, it's in your pattern how many you want to make of each. So I tend to just make <clears throat> a few of each at a time. Um, and I tend to lay it out because if you just are just going to grab and sew and grab and sew, when you get to the end and you have to make the last two blocks, you sometimes end up with the same colors or the same fabrics. So I kind of want to be organized. I can maybe start off being a little bit random, but then when I have just a few blocks left, I like to take all my pieces and organize it so I can have a variety in each block. All right, so block 1A and 1B, pressing away from that middle one. So as you're pressing, you want to do the same thing. You want to set the seams, set the seams, and then you really want to use your fingers to push it out and then just go straight across your seam. So I would sew one on and, and then press, then I would sew the other side on and press. So as far as lap size, we're going to make, be making six of each, but of course, I would just start by making one of each so then you kind of know the process you know the differences <clears throat> and then you can do one of each of we're moving on to step 15 so of the block 2 a and 2b so that is where we're going to use the light centers so the light centers like this and then two A units. And it's kind of the same situation. The first one, which is block two A, is gonna have the dark on the top left and then the bottom right. So it's opposite to the other one. But you will notice that the light ladder is still going from top right and down. If you see what I'm saying. And then we're gonna do the, the two B it's the opposite. So dark is gonna be on the top right and then bottom. Oh, I took the wrong one. Sorry guys. Sorry guys. This is the light center, bottom left and top right. All right. So so one on, and in this case, we're gonna press towards the middle. So now I'm talking about step 15 and step 16, all right? So making sure you lay it out, making sure it's laid um, correctly, it's going the right angle, and then you will end up with block <clears throat> to A, like this. And then block to B like this. So one is going this way, other one is going that way. Does that make sense? All right, so let's take some questions and see if you have any questions on this. Um, we're going to, do you see any questions popping up? Any tips on how to keep the sets random? Um, so, I mean, when we're sub cutting and if you stack things up, they're going you're going to have all the same colors. If you really want to have variety, I, I would, if I don't have that many different fabrics, it's always easier. Of course, I've always talked about this in previous quilt alongs and anything I do, if I'm doing scrappy, more variety is always better. But for example, when I did my flannel one, I only had five different fabrics. So what I did, I just stacked them up in five stacks according to the fabric, and that made it easier as I was pulling and sewing on to make sure that I didn't just use up one and then just had like one or two left for the last few blocks. So that's a great idea. Now, if you have more variety, it's not going to matter as much. Like I did, I have pretty much, I have three colors. I have black and teal and pink in this quilt that I'm making here. So I just kind of put it in two piles, kind of the really darks and then the pinks, um, so, so that I could mix them up easily. And then I just kind of watched my patterns um, so I'm not putting the same print next to each other, even though they're same, uh, sim different colors. 
So that's kind of my trick. I'm kind of a little bit unorganized scrappy and then I get kind of organized scrappy towards the end because <laughs> I don't want to. Um, so uh, pressing, you're going to be pressing. If there's a light center, you're going to be pressing towards that. If it's a dark center, away from it. So the one A and B away, two A and B towards. All right. It's all in your pattern. Read through the pattern, both the text and the images. And my biggest tip is, and this is, I always say this when, when I'm teaching classes, if I tell you something twice, if I tell you something three times, that mistake has been made multiple times before. So make sure you lay it out. Make sure the, um, it's going the opposite directions because we need equal numbers of all four blocks. Okay. So look first a few times and then so. <clears throat> Is eight fat quarters okay to use for lap size even though 10 fat quarters are listed? Yes, I made a lap size with only five different fabrics. So that's totally fine. Um, this one I'm actually using about, I'm using eight different for this quilt. So totally fine. <clears throat> Please answer until, until B, what side? Hmm. Oh, the B sets. I talked about this in, right in the beginning. I clarify, you're always sewing to, uh, on the long side, on the eight and a half inch side, if you're talking about the units B, uh, because we need to be able to cut two sections that are four inches. So if you sewed it the other way, seven and a half is not enough. What's the okay? quilt behind you? The quilt behind me, the Halloween is Haunted Eve. This was a kit that we had. It's a pattern, a uh, great one to use for panels. So uh, it's, it just kind of puts us in the mood. Beautiful. And I'm wearing uh, my skull skirt. I should show you guys. I'm wearing my skull skirt. Skull skirt. It's glow in the dark. So uh, if you all are ready, I think we are ready for a little stretch and yoga. And so we're going to turn it over to HP. He's over there. And then uh, we're going to come back and do our giveaway and finish it up. So if you have any last minute questions, you can post them, but get ready for a little bit of a yoga stretch. Okay. All right, take it, take it from here, Mr. HP. Let's see where we wanna go here. Let's All go over right. to this side. Let me bring my chair. All right. You guys see me okay? You hear me okay? I can't tell if you hear me okay because I don't have my headphones on so hopefully you hear me okay so let's do a little bit of self-care let's do a little bit of uh, being in the moment take a moment just those that are sitting stand up for a moment and I'm gonna have my camera person so that you can see my head because it cuts off a little bit uh, yes and what we'll end up doing is those that are standing will end up sitting down we're gonna do some chair yoga but I want to start first standing so those that have been sitting a long time at your sewing machine, take a moment just to stand. And first thing in your surrounding areas, just quiet it down for a second, just for about 10 minutes, tell everybody just to be quiet, give you 10 minutes just to rejuvenate and be in the moment, not worrying about getting your blocks done, not worrying about where you started. Just be in the moment and just breathe. Let's take a moment to just rejuvenate. Yoga has lots of good benefits. We're gonna keep it nice and easy and slow. You know your body best. If it doesn't feel right, don't do it. Otherwise, just breathe through it. Okay, here we go. Everybody, just, just stand, maybe even close your eyes. I know you need to see what I'm doing, but just listen to my voice. Close your eyes. Just stand still for a moment. And just notice your breath, just breathe. And if you're able, just breathe in and out through your nose slightly close the back of your throat so that you can hear the air enter and escape your body like this. We call that Ujjayi breathing, the victory breath. It's like the calming of the ocean coming in and going back out of the shore. Just taking a moment to yourself, just noticing your breath, being present as, as possible. Now just bring your palms together in front of your heart. As you take a deep breath in, you want to circle your arms to the sky, take a deep breath, look up to the sky. 
and as you exhale, slightly start to fold forward, put your hands on your thigh, and just feel the stretch in the back of your legs, and maybe just roll all the way down, release your shoulders, let your head drop, and just hold that for a moment. Inhale, come up to a nice little flat back, not all the way up, see your back is nice and flat, your knees are slightly bent, so you take the stress off of the back of your legs. Exhale, fold forward again, just release your back. <sighs> Inhale, circle your arms all the way up, come all the way up. Take a deep breath, look to the sky. Exhale, palms together in front of your heart. Let's do that one more time. We call this half sun salutations, saluting to the sun. Inhale, circle to the sky. Exhale, fold all the way forward, release your head down, release the back of your neck, release your lower back. Inhale, come halfway up to a nice little flat back. Exhale, fold forward. Inhale, circle to the sky, reach up nice and high. Exhale, hands to your sides. Now those that are standing, everybody let's sit down now. A little chair yoga, starting with the top of our body going down to our hamstrings. So just everybody sit in your chair. Sit nice and tall. Once again, just breathe and just notice being in the present moment. Just take a moment, maybe close your eyes, listen to my voice. A nice calming breath. Now, everybody, just circle your head to the right. Big head circles. Feel the pops and nicks and the stress in the neck. Circle it, circle it. Very nice. And then go the opposite direction. Big circles. Feel the release and the stretch in the front side, back of the neck. Everybody come back straight. Take a deep breath. Inhale, look up to the sky. Exhale, chin to your chest. Inhale, look up high. Exhale, chin to your chest. Come back to neutral, straight ahead, and just tilt your head to the left side. Feel the stretch all the way down the right side of the neck, and just hold here and breathe. Maybe close your eyes. Just enjoy, enjoy this moment. Inhale, lift your head, and go to the other side. Relax your head down to the right. Feel the stretch, and just slightly Release your left shoulder down as you tilt your head to the right. Breathe. No stress, folks. Just enjoy. Inhale, head comes back up. Now let's just roll our shoulders back. Big shoulder rolls. Yes, just releasing all the tension in the shoulders. And then shoulder rolls forward. Big circles. And continue to breathe. Breathe and relax. Enjoy this moment. Now relax your shoulders down, extend your right arm out in front of you, and then pull it across to the left using your left hand. Just pull it in and exhale. Just feel that release in the back of your right shoulder. Every time you exhale, you pull it in just a little further. Breathe and hold. Allow that release in the back of that right shoulder. And then extend it back out, release this arm down, extend your left arm out, use your right arm to pull it in and pull it across, keep that arm nice and straight, and as you exhale, pull it in a little closer, get more of a stretch in the back of that left shoulder. Breathe. Let's just hope there's no technical difficulties because no one's at the... Uh, at the board, so let's just hope everything just flows nice and easy, but we're gonna breathe through it anyway. Slowly release that arm and release that down. So we stretch the rear shoulders. Now let's see if we can take our arms behind our back and either grab your hands, grab your forearms, maybe you can see. Maybe you grab your elbows and you just hold that for a moment, opening up through the front side of your body and just breathe. Every time you exhale, you just shrug your shoulders a little bit further together, grabbing those forearms, grabbing your elbows, your wrists, whatever you can, knowing that everybody has 
certain ailments and restrictions, please be careful, be mindful. And slowly release that. And just take a moment and just shake your arms out. Now let's stretch through the sides of our torso. So take your left hand, kind of grab the right side of your leg, take your right arm nice and high, and as you exhale, just a little stretch over to the left. Feel that stretch down the right side of your body. Take a deep breath. Exhale, and just allow that stretch to do what it needs to do for your body. Inhale, come up, and let's switch it. Right hand grabs the left side, outside. Inhale, inhale your left arm nice and high. Take a deep breath. Exhale, and just reach and bend over to the right. Feel the stretch down the left side of your body. Breathe and enjoy. Inhale, come up. Oh, we could just do this all day, but we're not going to. We got some sewing to do. So now this torso, let's just do a little torso circle. So how do we do that? We take our torso and we just circle it forward, side, back, other side. Have you done this movement before? So if you haven't, it's your first time. Welcome to it. Now let's go the other direction. Big torso circles. Breathe and circle. Oh, that feels good. Now. Hold here, we're going to the lower back. Take your left hand, grab the right leg, or you can bring your legs together. Take your right hand, reach back on your chair, wherever you can, hold on to it, sit nice and tall. And as you take a deep breath, and as you exhale, you twist and turn to your right, looking back over your right shoulder. As you exhale, go a little deeper, and just breathe, never holding your breath. Breathe. Inhale back to the center and switch other side grab on hand goes behind you take a deep breath exhale twist and turn Every time you exhale go a little deeper And release yes now going to our hips if you're able take your right ankle cross your left knee and take a deep breath here sit nice and tall and as you exhale, just fold forward, hinging at your hips. Go right to where you feel that stretch in your right hip. Just hold and breathe. Every time you exhale, you go a little lower and hold and breathe. Remember all these stretches because you will do, do them again and again and again. Nice. Switch sides. Other ankle, left ankle across the right knee. Let that left knee drop. Take a deep breath. Exhale, fold forward. Just hold and breathe. Opening up through that left hip. Been sitting a long time. Release, rejuvenate, and enjoy the moment. Inhale, come up. One more stretch on each side. Extend your right leg out in front of you, nice and straight. Flex at your elbow, bringing your toes toward your nose. Take a deep breath and exhale, fold forward. Feel the stretch in your right hamstring behind your leg and just hold there and breathe. Breathe and hold. Every time you exhale, go a little deeper. Inhale, come up. Other side, extend your left leg. Flex at the ankle, take a deep breath. Exhale, fold forward. Yes, I know you'd like to go 30, maybe 45 or 60 minutes. But we don't have that much time. We got some sewing to do, everybody. Yes, inhale, come up, and just shake it all out, everybody. Shake it all out. Let's do three closing breaths. Bring your palms together in front of your heart. Take a deep breath in through your nose. Exhale out through your mouth. Two more times. Take a deep breath in through your nose. Exhale out through your mouth. One more time. Inhale the positive. Exhale, release all the negative. And as we close this, I say namaste. May the light in me salute the light in you. Namaste, everybody. Thank you very much. Continue on. I'll see you in a minute.
Wasn't that beautiful? I saw some of your questions and somebody asked, was Mr. HP a yoga instructor in his previous life? Well, he's a yoga instructor in his current life. He's done the 200 hours of yoga, right? 200? Oh, yes. Oh, yes. He's not currently teaching on a regular basis, but is planning to in the in the new year, possibly. Yeah, for sure. So he does the best classes, of course. Um, but yes, yoga is great. And even just stopping a minute and breathing is like the perfect thing. And remember all those stretches. Um, so I we want to do our giveaway. I'm going to do our giveaway. Um, we have some more charm packs to give away. So we have two winners today. What are winners today? We got hey. some charm packs. Uh, Robin, Bobbin, and Lori Stolpart. Congratulations, Robin and Lori. We got these for you. So make sure you send an email to us, help at gequiltdesigns.com. And um, we will get these to you, ship to you right away next week so i'm gonna leave you to it work on your blocks even if you only get one of each it's all good and then in the next segment we're gonna put it up on the design wall i'm gonna talk about assembly and talk about some tips on how to lay things out and if you have any specific questions especially if it's something that we covered in previous parts um, it's hard for us to see all the questions come through the live feed. Make sure you send an email to help at G Quilt Designs if you're totally stumped. But remember, you can always go back and watch the previous segments. They are available and we will have them all up on the blog linked. Um, maybe not by the end of the day, but they'll all be linked there. So you can always go back to them. And of course, that cutting video is in your account forever. All right, we will see you again at 3 p.m. Central Time. Bye, everybody.